Amanda here. Welcome back to Handmade No Hallmark. Today I've got these two fun festive cards featuring some really cute images from Hello Bluebird and a really fun technique using some dry embossing. I had a lot of fun creating these cards. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my backgrounds ready. I've got um, two pieces of like a pale gray cardstock. I'm not 100% sure which company this is, but I'll make sure to link to something similar in the description below. I've also got my MFT Christmas text background and I'm going to stamp onto these gray cardstocks with some white Hero Arts Unicorn pigment ink. And that's gonna create a really nice soft look in the background. It's gonna be really, really subtle. Um, I really love using text um, background stamps in my cards. I really think it adds a little bit of interest to the background and I really wanted to do something a little different. I don't normally use gray, but I found this really pale gray in my cardstock. I was going to put all of the images on white and then stamp down the text in gray, but I do that a lot and I wanted to try something a little different. And this was really fun and I love the way that it comes out. It's really soft and subtle and it just adds a little bit of interest. I'm going to stamp down this next one here, get a really good impression. And again, it's really subtle. So if you wanted to have something a little more intense, you could um, stamp it and then heat emboss it, make it stand out a little bit more. But again, I wanted mine to be really soft and subtle. I'm gonna go ahead and get my stamp cleaned off. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna work on um, some dry embossing. So dry embossing is a really fun and easy technique. And all you do is you take any kind of stencils or you can even do this with some dyes. I've never done it with dyes. I've only done it with stencils. And what you do is you take your stencil and you put it on your cardstock. I made sure mine was nice and dry so I didn't get any ink transfer. And you run it through your die cutting machine with the, um, the embossing plates and like a silicone rubber mat. I know that the Spellbinders um, embossing machine comes with an embossing plate and it comes with the, like, the rubber embossing mats. And again, it's a really fun way to add a little bit of interest in the back of a card without having to use like an embossing folder. I could have used an embossing folder, but I really wanted to do something that was really kind of just subtle and not super noticeable, but just enough interest that whenever you kind of tilt the card in the light, you can see that dry embossing. So here I've got a stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and this is part of the, I think their layering snowflakes stencil set. I've used this in the past. I've got my platforms all set up for embossing. So you want to put down the rubber mat first. And then you want to spritz your paper too because that makes it nice and um, kind of malleable. I didn't want to spritz it on the front because that's where all the ink was. So I spritzed it on the back. You lay down your stencil on top of that. And then you take your embossing plate and you put it on top. And that basically it just presses the stencil into the paper. And I did it at... Um, a couple of times and it's again super subtle and fun way to get more use out of your stencils you can do again you can do this with stencils um, I believe you can do it with dyes again I haven't done it before but I think I saw um, Jennifer McGuire do it with stencils um, but again or I'm sorry with dyes but again I'm not 100% sure I haven't tested that yet and then I had one of my boys come in and was asking me what I was doing. And so I showed him, I let him run the machine so he could see um, kind of the technique I was doing. And he thought it was really, really cool. So I was kind of showing him how that looked. So again, really simple and subtle. So I'm going to get my station all cleaned up here so we can work on our little images. Um, this was kind of like a test run and I wanted to see what I could make with it. And I really wanted to use these Hello Bluebird images. I just think they're super sweet. And I just had to make two cards because I had everything out. And I just felt like coloring this day. I really did. I felt like sitting down and just coloring and just relaxing. So I got all my images stamped out onto some uh, Simon Says 110 pound cardstock. 
and I stamped them down with some Copic Friendly ink. I believe this was Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink. All of the colors that I'm going to use today will be listed on the side of the screen for you to enjoy and to follow if you'd like the color combinations. I'm going to put on some music for you to enjoy and once we're all done coloring we'll get these images cut out and put our cards together.
all of my images are done being colored, I'm going to go in with some of my favorite finishing details. I'm going to go in with my uh, Wink of Stilla glitter brush pen and add some shine and highlights to their little accessories, their hats. And I do apologize that um, I didn't get the colors for their little scarves and the snowman's broom. I somehow forgot to turn on my camera when I was coloring that part, so I'll make sure it's in the description below um, all the colors that I used as well. I'm going to again continue adding some glitter here, and I was going to use my Nouveau shimmer pen, and I went to squeeze just a little bit more shine out, and it ended up coming out all over the place. Um, so I got a little acrylic block and a little paintbrush, and I'm going to just very carefully paint on that shimmer because it was just flowing out of the tip of that um, pen a lot that I couldn't really control it really well. So I felt like maybe with a paintbrush, I could have a little bit more control. So I'm going to add again a little bit to their scarves. I think these images are so, so sweet. I love them so much. I just love that they're, they, they don't really have mouths, but their expressions are, I just, I love their expressions. They're just super cute. And the little polar bear, I think, is probably my favorite. Um, just because, I just think he's so cute. <laughs> Gonna add a little shine to the trees as well. I was trying to use up all of that glitter that I had um, on this acrylic block so I didn't waste any of it. Once I have all of that done, I'm gonna go in with um, my white jelly roll pen and add some white highlights. This is a completely optional step. Not everybody likes to add the white highlights, but I love to add them to any type of a cartoon image. I just think it adds a lot of interest and character to them, really makes them shine. Um, again, it just adds a little bit of interest. I do recommend though that if you're gonna use any type of aqua pen to add glitter and shine that you do your white gel pen after you've done your glitter brush pen because the if you do it beforehand sometimes the brush pens have a tendency to smear the white gel pen so I always like to do it after um, again it just helps keep that white nice and bright and so that it doesn't smear I'm also going around my polar bear and adding some dot details around the outside of him just to make him look like he's a little bit fuzzy um, I discovered doing this uh, about a year or so ago and I really think it makes them look like they're fuzzy. I could just be imagining it, but I was just thinking that it looks like a little fuzzy bear. And adding some more highlights to my other images. I wanted these cards to be almost identical, um, just so I had two of the same card, because I really think they turned out really cute. And I did all this coloring, so um, making two cards was a lot of fun. Uh, if I like a design and I have the time, I have a tendency to try to make duplicates um, just to kind of make sure I have a lot of cards in my stash for Christmas because I send out a lot of cards. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in after I've die cut them with um, my black jelly roll pen so that doesn't get like squished um, in the uh, die cutting process. Once I had all those little images cut out, I can get my card bases assembled. These are all nice and dry now. Going to um, just use some liquid glue to attach them down. And I did die cut them out of uh, one of my stitched, scallop stitched rectangle dies. This came from an old um, MFT blueprints die set. I think it's still available. Um, if it is, I'll make sure to link it. Um, if it isn't, I'll link to a couple of really good um, scalloped rectangle dies that you could use if you like the look. Gonna get those adhered and I made sure that my text was up the right way. I have a tendency to put my text on upside down and these are just two top folding A2 sized card bases. I just prefer top folding cards to um, side folding cards. It's just a personal preference. You could easily create this design as a portrait style card or I'm sorry as a landscape landscape style card man I can't talk today so this process of uh, adding my little images here took me a while I'm not going to bore you guys with me fiddling and moving these around about a hundred times to make sure that they looked nice together and that the colors were nicely spaced so I'm going to go ahead and skip through that part with the magic of movie editing it took me it took me a while guys to get this 
where I wanted it. Um, I actually walked away from it for a little bit and came back and I was kind of happy with the way I had it laid out. Um, I just covered the back of these with some scrapbook adhesive foam squares to pop them up, give them a little bit of dimension. And I was just trying to figure out my placement here. I did move this little reindeer up a little bit. I wanted them to be kind of at the same distance as the other ones. Um, these top ones are a little bit tighter together than the bottom images, but I really do like them. And I really wanted to use all of them. I think I only, I didn't use two other images, uh, a little penguin and another little snowman. And there's another tree in there as well and some other really great sentiments that you can add. Uh, they look like little speech bubbles, which I think would be cute. So that's some options with this stamp set. Uh, again, Hello Bluebird makes such really cute images. I'm super excited to see what they bring out for this year at Christmas. Um, they got a, a really wonderful set that came out last Christmas that's um, all these little critters building a snowman and there's a goose in it. Oh, I fell in love with it, but it's like out of stock. So <laughs> I have to wait for it to come back into stock but I'm super excited to hopefully get my hands on that. So once those are all lined up there, and I apologize that I'm a little out of focus here, but I'm going to stamp down my greeting. I am using a greeting from a Simon Says Stamp set called, Simple Holiday Greetings. Again, I apologize that I'm out of focus. My camera, for some reason, didn't like to focus very well. Um, but I, again, I am using the simple holiday greetings from Simon Says Stamp. This came out, I want to say last year during Stamp Timber, maybe, maybe it wasn't Stamp Timber, but it came out last year and I love all these simple greetings, a nice, easy font, um, nice and clean. And I felt like it went really cute with this, uh, with these images because, um, the, uh, the greetings that are in the actual Hello Bluebird set, they're not really, they're more like speech bubble greetings. And I wanted something to go through the middle of these images. So I stamped them down onto some Simon's Schoolhouse Red cardstock. And I'm embossing them with some Brutus, Brutus Monroe Alabaster White Embossing Powder. And I'm going to die cut them out with a uh, flag banner die. And I'm going to put it right in the middle of these images and I think it's a nice way to kind of break them up add a little bit more red in there because I love to add red during Christmas time and for my cards so I felt like this was a good combination so again I'm just going to take a banner die and run that through my die cutting machine I'm going to attach those banners down using those same um, scrapbook adhesive foam squares these fit perfectly in these banners I was really surprised at how well they fit in there um, I was worried I was going to have to like cut some down or use the smaller ones, but these large ones worked out perfectly. And I'm just going to align those right through the middle underneath those sweet images. I want to make sure I get it as level and even as possible. And I think it looks super sweet. I love this so much. I just love coloring the characters too. I think these would be cute. As little magnets, um, I have a tendency to create little magnets for my fridge. I just use... Um, just some really cheap like flat magnets and I cut them out into um, little things from my fridge. So I think these would be cute additions to that. Once I have all of those aligned and ready to go, I'm gonna add in some of my favorite clay snowflakes just to add a little bit to the background, um, just to kind of reinforce the snowy scene I've got going on here. I know it's not much of a scene, but um, the snowflakes that are uh, dry embossed in the background, I just wanted to kind of add a little bit more to that. And I do apologize about my big hair getting in the way. Um, I was going to use the large snowflakes too, but I felt like they were almost too big. They kind of overtook the, um, the scene a little bit more than I had liked. So I just decided to stick with the small ones. And I decided just to pick them up with my fingertips instead of trying to use a tool. Because it never really works out for me. So I just decided to use my fingers and it worked out just fine. And I do apologize about my big head getting in the way. Sometimes I forget where my camera's placed and I just get in the way. I'm gonna add these last ones here onto this one. Get those all on there and I just kind of randomly put them on there. I didn't have any rhyme or reason to the placement. I just wanted to kind of fill it in and make it look nice. After I get those all placed down, I'm gonna go in with my black 
glaze pen and add those details to their little eyes as well as the noses on the reindeer and the polar bear. I really like doing this to creatures who have nice round eyes and black noses. I really think it makes them stand out and kind of brightens up the image and adds just a little bit of shine where um, they would naturally be uh, if it was, you know, out in the wild. <laughs> Either way, um, I really like doing this to my little images. I just kind of gently tap it on there and it fills in their eyes perfectly. Then finally, I'm going to go in with some Nouveau Crystal Drops in Morning Dew, and I'm going to add it to the snowman's little nose, as well as the penguin's beak, and the reindeer's bell, just to add some dimension to those, make them look a little glossy, and um, I always like doing that with snowmen, especially, and with any kind of bird image, because it just kind of makes like their beaks and their little noses kind of stand out and pop. Again, this, these are all optional things. These are just some finishing things that I really like to do um, just to kind of finish off my uh, image, or finish off my card, excuse me. That will finish up this card for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed these two fun Hello Bluebird cards featuring a really cool technique called dry embossing. It's a really fun way to get some more use out of your products. Again, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like button as well as the subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos here at my YouTube channel. It helps me bring all of the content to you, and I really hope you're enjoying the series so far. I'll catch up with you guys again real soon. Bye. screen I've got a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more videos at my YouTube channel.